Well, this week, Republican Tim Scott, who is in the 2024 presidential race, joined the ladies on that show we love to talk about here, The View. And in true View style, the race debate was ignited. But Tim Scott didn't bow down to their woke ideology. Instead, he stood up to the hosts and spoke truth. Here's a snippet. You have indicated that you don't believe in systemic racism. What is your definition of systemic racism? Let me ask, answer the uh, question that you've answered. Does it ex or does it even exist yeah. in your mind? Let me, let me uh, answer the question this way. One of the things I, I think about, and one of the reasons why I'm on the show, is because of the comments that were made, frankly, on this show, that the only way for a young African-American kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule. That is a dangerous, offensive, disgusting message to send to our young people today, that the only way to succeed is by being the exception. I will tell you that if my life is the exception, uh, I can't imagine. But, but, I can't but it is. But it's not, actually. Here's, here's, it's been here's 114 my, years. Yeah, so, so the fact of the matter is we've had an African-American president, African-American uh, vice president. We've had two African-Americans to be secretaries of the state. Uh, in my home city, uh, the police chief is an African-American who's now running for mayor. The head of the Highway Patrol for South Carolina is an African-American. Still in, 19, in 1975, um, there was about 15 percent employment in the African-American community for the first time in the history of the country. It's under 5 percent. 40% homelessness and 50 of, of African Americans. 50 percent of the folks get, in our community. Get 13 percent of the population. You have a chance to ask the question. I know that I've watched you on the show that you like people to be deferential and respectful. So I'm going to do the that same is thing. True. Joining me now to discuss this is the founder of Wrong Speak Publishing, Adam B. Coleman. Adam, thank you so much. Here, fantastic exchange there with Tim Scott, <laughs> who we've spoken a lot about on this program, and who I think brings. A really interesting and refreshing style to American politics. You have written a great piece about this in Newsweek saying that black Americans deserve the optimism that Scott's talking about. Talk us through that and what you thought about how Tim Scott dealt with the view. Well, for one, that exchange, I think, was perfectly done. Uh, he's able to express his viewpoint of optimism without being completely bombastic with, with Sonny. Um, but I... I to further go to my article, I, when I was watching it, I was watching two different personality types. I was watching an optimist versus a pessimist. Someone who is saying, yeah, I recognize that my grandfather grew up in hard times and faced oppression, but look at where we are now. And someone who is wanting us to focus on only those hard times to perpetuate that we're still in those hard times, despite Sonny's own upbringing, as she's expressing that episode that she grew up in the Bronx, single parent home, uh, grew up in, you know, one would assume some sort of poverty and look at where she's at now. But she wants to say that they're the exception. And what she really means by that is that she is exceptional. And those are two different things. And so what did also did you make of the fact that during the clip, it was his comments about gender and sexuality teaching in the classroom that drew massive boos from the audience. And do you think there's an issue there that's going to wind up drawing black and other minority voters to the right and towards Republicans with this whole culture war around these issues, even as many white suburbanites get pulled to the left with it? No, I don't think so. I, I really, really believe that this, this topic of gender... Um, especially transgender, these, these particular things are very niche. And I honestly believe when regular people hear about what is actually going on, they are appalled by it. Um, obviously, most Americans are, uh, I would say, well-intentioned. You know, they're not necessarily hateful people or anything of that nature. And they try to figure out what's fair in society. But when they find something that is so extreme so ideological, something that doesn't make sense according to human history, then that's when they start to repel from that. And I know plenty of Democrats who do not like this ideology. This is a very fringe ideology perpetuated mm. by progressives. And, you know, the view has over the years formed into a progressive hive mind. Uh, and so it doesn't surprise me that their audience, which likes this particular content, would actually boo him on this. And just to get back to what you were saying before about that case for optimism, you know, one of the things we've spoken about here, Adam, on this show a bunch of times, you and I, is how so many of these issues are kind of proxies for class, which is the issue that nobody wants to discuss in America. 
How much of that case for optimism, you know, he's coming at it from an African-American perspective, but how much of that also transfers to an awful lot of people in the United States who feel like they have been left behind no matter what their skin color is and that, you know, the, the way the things are, there's, there is an elite and there's an everybody else? Right, and that's that's actually what I try to talk about often is that race is used as a distraction from class. You know, Sunny is of a particular class. Um, I'm pretty sure she does well for herself. Um, but the thing is, she wants to hyper focus on race because it's a distraction for how much money she makes. And amongst other people that exist in our society that are perpetuating this progressive ideology, the problem is that they don't want to address a class issue. They don't want to address the economics that other people are facing. They don't want to face uh, how some of this migrant issue might be affecting real working people um, and their economics as well. They don't want to talk about you know jobs going overseas. You know they want to focus on the most superficial, the most fringe. Uh, you know they they want to talk about trans because that's a distraction. They want to talk about race because that's a distraction. When at the end of the day, we know what the real battle is. The battle is between who has and who does not have. Um, and that is actually the crux of all of this. Adam, I think you have just said words that I want every U.S. Report viewer to remember. Race is a distraction from class, and I think that this sums up so much of American politics. Adam Coleman, thank you so much for your words of wisdom and look forward to having you back here again on the U.S. Report.